Looking to transform your family game nights? At Perfectly Pick Games, we specialize in family games that bring everyone closer. Our games aren't just fun. Kids and teens will learn how to take turns, develop basic strategy skills, and understand the thrill of winning and grace of losing. With our exclusive gift of games, you can give months of gaming excitement to your family. Choose a three-month or six-month gift, and we'll deliver hand-picked family games to your doorstep every month. And here's the best part. Right now, you can use the promo code GOLDENMOJO and receive 20% off your selected plan. Don't miss out on this exclusive offer. Use promo code GOLDENMOJO and save 20% today at Perfectly Picked Games. Hello, all you paranormal freaks. It's the last Saturday of the month, and you know what that means. The veil is at its thinnest. So if you're brave enough, all of you hitchers and drifters, load up for a ride with Golden Jay and Logan as they traverse to the other side. Hello, all of my paranormal freaks out there. It is I, Golden Jay, hanging out with his co-host and future ghost, Just Logan. That's right, everybody. We're back for the other side. It's a, li- it's a little late. It's a little late, but it's it's it, still there. And and it's my and my apologies. It was me. I was uh, uh, last week. We come off of uh, the holidays of the Fourth of July, and and so to get back into the studio, we were recording um, a couple two stops, a couple golden eighties, and by the time that I was done with the two stops, going to the eighties ones. I text Logan. I'm like, "Hey, man, can we push this back a week? I am, I am fucking toast." So, so yeah, we're a week out, but you are not going to get all of July now. So, yeah, that's it. Works out good because we get the we get the whole of July because July had one on the 31st. So, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Also, yeah, we, we have... get two other sides in August. Then, that's right. Technically, that, actually, uh, maybe let's yeah, so maybe three. Depending, um, of course, uh, as you all know, I am heading down to Louisiana where I'll get to be with Logan in person. Yeah, <laughs> and we're talking about just recording another side episode down there, and but it's gonna fall funny because uh, we'll be recording what maybe what like the 18th or something like that. Yeah, something like that. And uh, I got to thinking, it's like we won't be able to cover all the episodes. Maybe we'll just do kind of a free for all other side. We'll have the rocker chick there and uh, your mom and dad there and, and uh, you know, it's a lot God of only knows. A lot of people are going to be there. <laughs> Chico and, uh, will be and, there. And an abundance of people will be there. <laughs> so a couple of microphones and all of us hanging out. It should be a good time. We'll see what we come up with. It'll be fun. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, it'll be great. Looking forward to it. And looking forward to getting down and seeing everybody, man. It seems like for forever. It it's has been, been a while. It's, it's been, been forever while. since I've been face to face with you. What a Dallas? Yeah, that would have been so yeah, you've seen me a lot sooner than you've seen my sister, because my sister didn't didn't make it to the Dallas trip. That's true. Yeah, because it was just me, Matt, and Kayla and my parents. I'm I'm thinking that was uh that was uh, twenty twenty two. Wait, did Which, my sister come to that? No, I think no, she did. No, 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 she didn't. No, no, but uh, when was when was um, I? I did see her at Gunner's wedding. That's right. She did get to Gunner's wedding. That yeah. was, Gunner's wedding was before us seeing each other, though. Was it? Yeah, I think I'm fairly certain. I don't know. Fuck, it's hard to keep track of time. It goes by so quick. I can't, keep, I can't keep track of it. I know I'm going to get yelled at, but um. I bet it was. I bet it was 2021, wasn't it? Well, yeah, because Gunner was married before he started podcasting. So it was definitely before. Because Mojo got married while y'all were podcasting. Uh, Gunner got married before we started okay. podcasting because he had his house and all that jazz. Yeah, he was pod. They were podcasting from the from the old Plymouth house. Uh huh. Man, I was actually thinking about that the other day, uh, Momo's wedding, and we did the full-blown Golden Image podcast of just a bunch of 
bunch of us hanging out in that fucking uh, cottage. It was a good episode. It was fun. It was so much fun. That's why I was, I think I was thinking about it because I was thinking about the Louisiana trip and I was thinking maybe do something like that. One camera, you know, and just a couple of microphones. People can kind of fade in and out and, and, uh, you know, talk if they want to and, or not. Or sit so. in the background and be judgy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm okay with that too. So yeah, lots of stuff going on. Of course, uh, um, we made an announcement, uh, last night during recording, um, that we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sneak peek you guys on it, but it will come out in a couple of weeks when we, we have a chiller filler coming out. So, nice. uh, um, we did make the announcement that, uh, the, uh, team boozers are going on their for first paranormal investigation. Oh, really? You guys finally pick a place did you? Well, uh, you know, as we get into as we get into today's episode, our, the Brian Greer episode is in in yes the month this month, yeah, yeah. Um, we become really good friends with Brian, and uh, and you know he is an avid um, investigator, and I reached out to him and I'm like, hey, um, I want to go on an investigation before I go to this uh, this um, con, this paranormal con. Paracon, the the pair unity, what we're going to do in yeah. Oct in October. I said uh, I just want to be, uh, I want to have something in my back pocket that says, "Hey, look, you actually did an investigation." As <laughs> you've been podcasting for two and a half years and you never done a, done an investigation, but so he's like, "Let me get it set up," and he's got it set up. We're going down to uh, the Fowler Theater in Benton County, down uh, down by but down by Indy somewhere. And uh, we're gonna do a three-hour investigation in the in the basement of this theater. You 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 bring in Chico to be your cameraman, or are you just camera it yourself, or I just camera it myself. It's um, it's a long trek, and uh, there's a lot of things going on in in October. No, in what I say, it's in September. I think September. he's actually gone. Yeah, that weekend. So, but yeah, we are definitely going to shoot video for the Patreon. So get excited. Oh, that is exciting. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how you handle it. Uh, I'll wear my diaper. Don't worry. J there you go. Will, I'll make J-Dub change me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I think you'll have a good time. It's, it gets spooky, but it's going to be really interesting. And the fact that you're going there with people that do it professionally. You know. Right. Well, and that's good for me. I mean, I, I'll know, you know, I'll know what we're, what, what we're looking for, what to do and, and what not to do. And, you know, it'll be, uh, it'll be a good experience. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. And J-Dub's been on a few investigations too, if I remember right. She's gone with a few people. She had some stuff. Yeah. Well, well, look that Brad Ferris, you remember we had yeah. uh, Brad Ferris on, so he, she has been with, uh, been with him on a couple. And so, yeah, she's definitely got that under her, under her belt, but yeah, it'll be good to be good to get me out there and, get some of that experience so i'm super excited uh, and brian's a super nice guy i really and i really enjoyed uh the back and forth with him and and just talking with him about different things and uh he wants us to come down and do uh the freak out of the fowler which is um it's kind of like a convention but not but not quite mm -hmm. it's just kind of a get together that they have before they do some long investigations that night. I don't think we're going to do that one. Uh, it'd be a lot for me and the rocker chick to take on for the month of September. So, yeah, cause we have some plans the, the weekend of the 14th and that we, that we're going to be away. And so, yeah, we're going to, I think we might have to miss that one, but getting down there to the, to the Fowler anyway, a couple weeks before that's going to be awesome. And of course that's Beetlejuice weekend, the release of uh, the new Beetlejuice. So they oh, are yeah. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. They are doing a back-to-back. -back, um, they're doing the old one and then the new one, and then we get to investigate after they close that up. So, well, that's cool. Yeah. So I don't know so, if we're going to make the movie or not, but it'll be fun. Well, it looks in the movie looks interesting. It's crazy to see think of Michael Keaton coming back and playing Beetlejuice like God knows how long. Right. After playing him last time, but I mean, he did it with <laughs> Batman, and he was the only good part of that movie. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't care for the Flash? No, that, that movie was fucking terrible. <laughs> See, but no, I, Michael Keaton was great. I actually enjoyed it. I fuck, I'm a huge Flash fan, so it just it just agitated me. But it, Michael Michael Keaton and uh, the chick that played Super Superwoman were yeah. both really enjoyable. Absolutely. Um, I I loved. I think the I don't I don't like Ezra. I don't like him. I don't yeah, like I don't him either. as the Flash. Um, I wish they would have just uh, kept the uh, the Barry Allen from the, the show. CW show. Yeah, he, and, Grant Gutson's great, but like Warner Brothers has some weird thing against casting a blonde guy to play Barry Allen, and Barry Allen's always been a blonde dude, and they always just cast guys with dark hair that don't look nothing like him. <laughs> but no, I like Grant Gutson. I thought he did a great job. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's not amazing. his fault that that show's story kind of got shit the last like four <sighs> seasons, but that's kind of CW's Arrowverse's whole thing. It's like it's good for the first two or three, and then it's just ass. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't like Ezra. I couldn't stand him at all. And then he turned out to be a shit bag of a human also on top of right. all that. So right. I'm surprised they pushed, uh, pushed it out after all that. I mean, they, they canceled that Batgirl movie that was completely done that Brendan Fraser was in. Like it was, it was done and they just shelved that for tax purposes, but they pushed through the Ezra Miller one. Cause they're like, Oh, we spent a lot of money. <laughs> I was like, well, you, you've completely finished the movie and you fucking shit canned it for tax money. Just do the same with that one. <laughs> fucking Hollywood, man. I don't know. I loved all the cameos in it, you know, getting down there in that last, in that last part of it, you know, seeing Nicholas Cage as fucking Superman. That was stuff cool. was cool. Yeah. It was cool seeing uh, Christopher Reeves. Absolutely. And yeah. All that stuff. And like you said, with getting to see Nicholas Cage uh, as Tim Burton's Superman that never got to be like they right. tested that they got that man in a suit. Kevin Smith was helping write this was supposed to help write the script and all that jazz. And that just never got off the ground. But it was interesting to see. I don't know that Nick Cage as Superman would work. I don't, I just, I'd never seen it, but old Nick Cage, I think could do it before he got too wacky and people let him be <laughs> wacky, you know, because right. when he first showed up, he, he did some pretty serious roles where he was chill, but after he got so famous, he was just like, I'm going to do Nicolas Cage stuff. And people are like, all, all, all right. Okay. <laughs> Starting with fucking Ghost Rider. Good Lord. You know, it's it's funny. I I didn't hate Ghost Rider. Oh, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't the best movie ever. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't hate it. It just got worse with the fucking second one. Yeah, like, I never what, even oh, never even watched the second God, one. God, they're like, we're doing it again, but this time it's going to be rated R, and it's not going to be a continuation of the other one. And I was like, first of all, why the same actor if it's not continuing the first one? And then like I was like, oh, it's R rated. Maybe they'll do it right. And I was like, no, they didn't. <laughs> uh, it was horrible. He was doing wacky shit the whole movie. He, he did a better Ghost Rider movie in that Drive Angry movie that had nothing to do with Ghost Rider. That was a good flick, too. That, I that flick that was yeah. solid. That was more yeah. Ghost Rider than either Ghost Rider <laughs> films. Uh, his co-host in the first one, or his co- co-star in the first one. Uh, was I, was I, his face from uh, Wes, Grounded Wes. for Life guy, right? Oh, was that Don, was Donald Logan in it? Yeah, he was his uh, in the first Ghost Rider. He was his uh, his his crew manager. Okay, I, yeah. I don't rem- I don't remember that. Yeah, uh, what I do remember is it was Wes Bentley uh, that played um, uh, the villain uh, Blackheart. Like the, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and I love Wes Bentley. I don't know why. I just uh, I probably because he was a main character in uh, We Are Your Friends, which is mm. one of my favorite movies. So I loved Sam Elliott. In the first Ghost Rider movie, that I like as the as the uh, caretaker, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck He's it. sitting there drinking his water with his big mustache and be like, "What's up, bonehead?" <laughs> Have you ever seen a Sam Elliott role that you didn't like? No, it's because he's yeah. a phenomenal actor. I love him in The Ranch. He's fantastic. Yep, yep. absolutely. Uh, but yeah, it's it, like I said, but it's just they let Nicolas Cage get. Too wacky, so he, that's all he does now. I did love in that movie where he was playing himself, though, with uh, with Pedro. Yeah, I dug I, I've that. I've not seen it yet. I I've been meaning to watch it, and I have not seen it yet. It's fucking uh, hilarious. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, go back a few years. Uh, pre Roadhouse, and um, 
go watch uh, the elephant, the elephant man or elephant boy. I can't remember what it's called. The elephant man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sam's in that with uh, with Cher. I do believe when Cher the was the Cher was the mom. What a great. I mean, that's where I fell in love with Sam Elliott. I mean, right there. So, but yeah, there you go. This you is seen, our... uh, you seen your you seen your boy is going to be Doctor Doom. <laughs> yeah, you got to get him back in the MCU somehow. Might uh, as well give him a give him a different mask and let him go to town. Yeah, no, I mean <laughs> they need to make money, and that's how they make money. Because uh, yeah. they had to pivot away from uh, Kang, so because they scrapped that whole thing because Avengers Five was supposed to be Kang Dynasty, and now it's Avengers Five is now uh, Doomsday. Doomsday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wondered how they were going to play that out because, I mean, as soon as Kang hit the end of what, Loki, um, the first two. season. Or se- well, one and two, he was in both, yeah. was I never I never watched uh, season two. I'm, season two was good. Uh, what was not good was Ant-Man Quantumania, which Kang was a huge <laughs> part of that. <laughs> Then they dumped all this. Uh, they dumped all this Kang, and then they just jump, jump well, ship on yeah, it. Yeah, they have. They are just like we can't because he did all this shitty stuff he did and whatnot. But it's just crazy to think that they didn't just recast his ass. Right. I was like, you showed fifty thousand different versions of this dude. Right. Uh, find a different fucking actor and be like, it's the Kang from this universe. The homeboy's purple, anyways, in his main <laughs> form. So it's not like it fucking matters. <laughs> Just cast uh, somebody that kind of looks like him and be like, he's from this parallel universe. I mean, fuck, we're about to have Doctor Doom that's the same actor as Iron Man, so you can do well, it. They they absolutely did it with Rhodey. Why wouldn't they do, uh, I mean, right out the exactly. gate? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They were like, hey, here's Rhodey. And they're like, now this is Rhodey. I mean, fuck. Case in point with uh, the new Captain America about to come out. Uh, the guy that's playing Thunderbolt Ross has been the yep. same person since the Edward Norton Hulk movie. He died. Right. Now it's fucking Harrison Ford. And then they just make a they just make a joke like, I don't recognize you without your mustache. And be like, <laughs> yeah, that's what changed. It also just like makes it very clear for me that Harrison Ford can't grow a fucking mustache. <laughs> there you go. But I guess uh, I just didn't want to have to explain why the Red Hulk because it's weird in the comic books the Red Hulk is Thunderbolt Ross. Uh huh. And when he transforms the mustache disappears. Oh. So I guess they didn't want to explain that in the MCU. Be like, why does he have a mustache here, but not a mustache there when he's a Hulk? I was like, I don't fucking know Hulk magic. I, listen, they have they have fucked that whole Hulk storyline from the very beginning. I, I mean, liked the Edward Norton one. I didn't mind the Edward Norton one. I hated the the one prior to that, uh, the first one. Oh God, that was fucking awful. Yeah. Uh, and I like Jen- Jennifer O'Connelly. I like her, mm-hmm. and uh, and just and Nick Nolte. I'm a big Nick Nolte guy, you know, throughout the years. And I just that whole that whole movie just was not really that great. And it's just and then so you, those two you lose in the shuffle because oh, yeah. not only they change out, you know, Bruce Banner, but uh, you know, it's just the storyline just didn't carry well and. I don't know. I also, don't know. they they've they've Hulk never really got his fucking time in the in the Avengers setting, really, uh, outside of like the first Avengers, and then like after that, he Hulk gets the shit smacked out of him by Thanos and disappears yeah. until he comes back as the Smart Hulk, which nobody really wants to fucking see Smart Hulk. That's not what we're here for. <laughs> he's shorter. We- he's not as muscly. It's it's just his actor, but green. I mean, it's just right. Meh. And then, you know, they did She-Hulk and... Well, then there's that. And they added, at the end of She-Hulk, they gave him his son. Yeah. And which they, which they haven't not, done, they haven't shit, done with. shit with. Yeah, they haven't done <laughs> nothing with him. So, I don't... And now we're going to have Red Hulk, which just... It's hard to imagine Harrison Ford... We're going to see a big Harrison Ford that's red mm. and, and yelling. It's going to be it's gonna be strange, because that dude hasn't done like that much enthusiasm in his right. acting in a, quite a long right. time. I don't know, man. I, uh, but back to the original, man. I mean, uh, love seeing that uh, Robert Downey Jr. is back in the MCU. You knew they were going to bring him back. There was no doubt that Just there was. Just didn't know that it was going to be his fucking right. Doctor Doom. Right. Well, I did. I did uh, uh, watch a video where they talked about how um, 
Oh man, here, yeah, here. This is me not being a very good uh, um, uh, comic book guy, but uh, that um, Victor Von Doom was had actually taken the mantle after Tony Stark died in the comics or whatever. And so, yeah. I mean, it He's only a, seems it, fitting. It all interchanged once or twice. That's for right. sure. It's just uh, now we just got to see if this Doctor Doom is going to be coming from the Fantastic Four's universe. Right. Because, like, they've showed, they showed a brief trailer of that, and, like, that's very clearly not the Marvel Cinematic main universe because it's uh, a timepiece. It's in the 60s. But oh. like a '60s, that's like all futuristicy because Reed Richards existed. So that that team's coming from another universe. When they meet up with the other ones, it's wow. it's, a, it's a whole thing. It's 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 going to be hard to follow. And the... yeah, that's Marvel being like, man, we really should have done Fantastic Four at the beginning, but we couldn't. So right. now we got to find a way to shoehorn them in, like they've been here forever. But they haven't, so we'll be like, they've been here forever in this universe, and now they're in this universe because I'm assuming they're going to be like, Doctor Doom got his ass over there, so they have to go. They have to follow him. Or whatever. It, it's it's all going to be – it's all leading up to the whole fucking big storyline where all the universes are going to be fighting each other and all that jazz. So Is that the, is that the Secret Wars? Is yeah, it? Secret Wars has always been a thing where all the multiple different versions of everybody gets thrown on this big thing. And they're like, hey, the winner of this gets to be okay, and all the rest of you losers are gone. Well, didn't they do that, uh, something similar to that in the Arrowverse when the Infinite Crisis War? Crisis on Infinite Earths, yeah. yeah. These are all things, like I said, all these com companies back in the day, they all did story arcs that were really similar. They're like, all right, they got Battle Planet, and we got Battle World, and <laughs> Infinite Crisis, and <laughs> so it, it, it is what it is. It's a, it's a whole big mess it's just marvel's trying to get back to where everybody likes him again right right yeah because they kind of screwed the pooch there for uh for a, a phase minute. or two yeah, yeah yeah hey whatever works man i'll take i'll take it let's yeah. do it i mean i haven't been to marvel movie in theaters in years up until deadpool when i went and watched that last weekend so oh yeah deadpool i i'm not allowed to go see it well if i if i go see it i have to go see it by myself Apparently, because uh, the rocker chick does not want to go watch Deadpool. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> she doesn't like it. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a big Deadpool fan. I want to go see it more for just the storyline and the cameos. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, because I've watched uh, watched a bunch of stuff on it, and of course, you know, Call Guys did an episode on it uh, this, uh, last Monday. So, you know, I, I kind of know everything that's going to happen, but I just want to go see it all. You know, it was, kinda I had a fantastic time. I was laughing and screaming at the screen. Like it was a great time. I can't remember the last time I had a good time watching a Marvel movie like right. that. I mean, and it is always nice to see Hugh Jackman. His Wolverine. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you get him in the actual Wolverine outfit this round. Yeah. So it's, it's it was, like I said, I had, a, I had a great time watching it and everything. I'm surprised. Uh, uh, it always It's always weird listening to, uh, I always forget his name, homeboy from uh, Guys With Issues. Uh, Chris? Yeah. It's always weird hearing him try to talk about a movie that's that vulgar because that dude is very much uh, <laughs> not, not a vulgar. vulgar person at all. So it's just like seeing him trying to like skirt around like, I can't say any of the lines from this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, but, you know, they they got they got through it uh, uh, without any. I mean, I always feel funny when I go on the call, guys, because, you know, I'm, I'll am i be like, yeah, hey, yeah, all well, that fucking bitch was terrible in this movie. Oh, well, yeah, you and, know, I'm and, in the same boat. Right? So. And those guys are like, uh, yeah, that B was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, anything else? I know you're getting ready for, um, rain. is it, uh, I always fuck it up. It's Power, Power Morphicon. Morphicon, yeah. It's close. I've only got uh, 21 days now until I get an airplane, so. Ooh, yeah, you excited? Right, yeah, absolutely. Right now, it's just waiting for, I have a lot of people sending me stuff to take to the convention, uh -huh. and right now, it's just, a, I've got all the stuff that I need 
and everything. But now I'm just it's just a waiting game, hoping stuff gets from foreign countries to me in time. Ah, uh-huh. gotcha. Because there's there's other people that uh that work with me that are like, hey, can you bring this stuff to represent me since I can't come from this place to that place? I'm like, yeah, absolutely, just get it here. And everybody waited till the beginning of August to start shipping shit. And I'm like, I've been telling them for months. I'd be like, no, dude, come on now. Don't wait. Just yeah. get it. So yeah. it's just that. Uh, just just like I said, I've never been there to California. So I'm excited and nervous about that. Uh, I haven't been on an airplane in probably over a decade at this point. So Right. When's the last one coming back from Germany? Uh, the last one is no, I visit, I did a trip from Indiana to visit my folks for one of the Christmases while I was there Oh, or after Christmas, technically. So I flown from, uh, O'Hare to gotcha. Houston and then back. That wasn't, that wasn't a bad flight. That was one way or that was a nonstop or whatever the fuck you right. call it. No, yep. no stops. And the same no as layovers. my flight to California, no layovers. So. Yeah, layovers suck. Yeah, when I first scheduled my <laughs> flights, that's all they had, but they've changed my flight like three times since I've scheduled it, and now both of mine are non-layovers, so I was like, fine, fuck it. That's fine yeah, with me. I'll take it. I'd rather take that. It. Less worried about losing <laughs> luggage when it's just on a plane and then get there. Yep, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, I think the last time we flew was to come down for uh, your sister's wedding. See, I can remember if you guys... Did everybody fly for that? No, just me and me and the rocker chick were the only ones that flew down. Okay, because I remember else... that I thought I remembered people driving, but I couldn't remember yep. how. Uh, I think I just assumed you guys rode in with the uh, the others. No, I think we stayed. We stayed longer. We mm. got there before everybody, and we stayed longer. So, um, but yeah, the the layovers in Dallas, you know, one of them was like four or five hours, you know. It's like, yeah, which is ironic because you could be you could drive from Dallas in four or five hours and be where you need to be. <laughs> True, but you know, it gives you a chance to get your drink on before you get on that plane, and uh, that's what we did. Went down to uh, what is it, uh, Chili's or whatever it was. Oh, it's either a had... Chili's or a fucking Fridays or an Applebee's, or whatever the fucking airport. It might have been TGI it. Fridays. It might there have been go. TGI Fridays. Get your drink on, you know, have a couple drinks and some supper and uh, basically go down and sit in the hard plastic seats and wait for your boarding. You know, yeah. Just... I don't mind flying. I just fucking hate airports. <laughs> yeah. They're it's not just, a lot of fun. It, they're just fucking, uh, it's annoying and a lot of sitting and waiting and like mm-hmm. watching the screen all paranoid. Cause I had <laughs> the worst experience I had was a couple years ago uh when it was time for me to take daniel back to the airport when he was an unaccompanied minor to fly back to his mom right i took off a day from work drove to houston got there and got to the 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 stuff and they're like you do realize this flight's tomorrow and i was like you gotta be fucking kidding me (laughs) so i drive all the way back from houston go there the next day and they delay his flight like they keep delaying it while i'm there and then they're like, okay, this flight's going to be in an hour. And I'm sitting there with him, and he's like, I have to go to the bathroom. I was like, are you sure? It is, can't wait. And he's like, yeah. So we go take him to the bathroom, which is a little bit of a walk. And by the time I get back, uh, it says fucking boarded. And I talked to the lady. I was like, what? I said, it, it was delayed for an hour. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, but uh, uh, things changed. So we just we went ahead and boarded. And I was like, what the f- f- motherfuck? Right. <laughs> I'm like, I was gone for 15 minutes, lady. Like, uh, I was like, can you open that back up? And she was like, no, I can't. And I was like, you got to be, f-. I was like, how is this my fault? I was like, literally 15 minutes ago, this thing said <laughs> an hour. And we walked away. I was like, nothing came up. Yeah, we didn't announce it on the intercom. And I was like, what the fuck? Open, and, the, open the door. Open yeah. The fucking so door. she was like, she was like, okay, I understand. We apologize. We can't open it. But here, uh, we we got another opening on a flight that's a few days from now. Oh god! <laughs> and I'm like, fine, fuck it, whatever. Uh, but the worst part was is right as they're giving me this ticket, she was like, "This is the only one we have. Here you go." A lady with four fucking kids run up, and they're like, "What happened? What happened?" And she's in the same boat. She took her kids to the bathroom. Right. And they're just, they basically just tell the lady that, like, look, we boarded it. You're fucked. And we don't have nothing to give you. So unless you had insurance, you're going to have to buy new tickets. 
And this lady starts bawling, which freaks her fucking kids out. Right, right. And her kids start screaming and crying. And Daniel starts crying because he hears these kids say, we don't get to go home. We're never going home. And Daniel's <laughs> oh, like, no. Daniel's like, am I never going home? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, don't fucking listen to these kids, man. Like, we got a ticket right here. You're fine. You're fine. And it was it was fucking horrendous. The, the third flight that we went, uh, so I think my sister ended up taking him there because I was like, "Listen, I'm out of vacation days, right? And right. I can't go in that fucking airport again." And I was like, <laughs> "I just can't." Oh man, it was horrible. Yeah, I think the last when we were down there, when we were down there, we took Daniel to to Houston so he could fly back with. I was with your mom and dad, and. We got tied up in traffic and we were running late and your mom and him sprinting across that fucking airport and basically jamming into the, the TSA and people were so fucking cool letting her uh, and him jump in there so they could get on the plane. It was uh, it was insane. Yeah. I, fucking... I sat at the bar and drank with your dad. It was great. Yeah, no, <laughs> we 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 are going hours, hours, hours. Early because uh, Kayla's mom is driving us. And I was like, I was like, she needs to, Kayla's making her mom stay here the night before. <laughs> so we wake up and we go and I was like, I don't care if I have to sit at the airport for three fucking hours until my flight. I just want right. to make sure I am there. And if there's traffic that I'm fine. Right. It's all I give a shit about. Absolutely. Just give me California. Cause you um, know, it's, it's one thing. Like if something fucking happens on the flight back, that's not a big problem. I'm not missing anything. Right. I don't want to miss anything. So the most important thing is just getting there. Absolutely. <laughs> With all your stuff. Yes. All the stuff would be preferred. You know, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to break up the stuff that I need for my table into different suitcases in case they fucking lose one. <laughs> I'm not completely empty handed, you know, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. Ugh. Insane. Isn't it? It's insane. Yeah. Travel. Uh, but yeah, we'll be down there um, in a couple weeks. We are driving down. Um, Don't envy that drive. That drive is a long one. It's a long one, but man, you know, airline tickets right now, I'm sure you know. Fucking are, insane. Yeah, so it's just going to be easier to drive down, a little less expensive than trying to fly five of us down there. So. Well, yeah, and you got people to share the, the drive with, too. And, you know, people also to talk to while you're driving. So Yeah, yeah, that's – yeah. I talk to these people all the time. I'm, I'm good. I'm going <laughs> to – I bought a little monitoring system that uh, hooks to the back of the uh, the seat that uh, hooks into my phone. If you need me, I'll be watching uh, a movie or something. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure I'll catch all kinds of hell for that, but it'll be oh, fun. Yeah. I'll enjoy myself. Yeah, long drive. What is it? Uh, I know it, it was. What was it to your place uh, from up here? Do you remember? Oh man, I think was it eighteen. Uh, I I just remember when I drove through, I dealt with a lot of traffic, so it ended up being like twenty one hours for oh. me. But I think I think it normally it's supposed to be like eighteen, right, or something like that. If you, just depending on where you drive through, but you're going to you're going through Texas into Louisiana. So that'll add to my folks' place for me is about an hour and twenty minutes. So, will I take that time off? Because they are more north than what you are now, right? Uh, I don't fucking don't ask me how to map. I'll 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 Google it later. I'll get it on the Goog later, man. No worries. I just know that they're <laughs> like an hour and twenty minutes away from me. That's that's all right I know. On. I don't know where you got to go. <laughs> I don't either. To do that. I'm going to leave Gunner in charge of that, so it'll be great. <laughs> it'll be wonderful. But, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to come down there, hang out, uh, get to see everybody in person. It's always so much better. It's nice to be able to see you and talk to you like this, but uh, yeah, to see person's you in person is going to be – Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so, uh, but you guys are doing the trip – you're doing a trip with a baby. That should be interesting. Uh, she's, she's wonderful. It'll be fine. She'll probably sleep most of it. It'll be nice. Yeah, Grandma will be right there. There I'll be go. over. I'll be over with the headphones on going, you guys good? All right. Yep. All right. I'll be over here. <laughs> just give her just give her some, what is it, fish? She likes fish. Just give her she some fish. She loves fish. fish. Yeah, yep. she watched fish all day long. There you go. Oh, my just got to put some fish on your screen. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, anything else exciting going on? Like I said, we're doing, uh, we're going to do a ghost investigation. We got uh, Para Unity coming up in October. 
Um, we've got great guests uh, still coming. You know, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of the guests we had on for the month of July. Um, you're going to get to see uh, next week episode with uh, Oracle Pink, a psychic medium. Oh, nice. Um, we just, I mean, we didn't have her. She wasn't reading us or anything, but she just, uh, we, you know, get to know her and talk to her. Uh, that was worked in, and, and Brian Green, or Greer will be on there with us too for that one. So, um, we got, uh, what else we got coming up? Um, Tanya from, um, the, the, the old hospital on college Hill out in West Virginia. Uh, thanks to, thanks to, um, hold on. What is it? What is it? What is it? the king of Tusop, the king of Tusop, um, the fan of the month, Mason, the straw man. Oh, straw man. He's he's now he's now deemed himself the king of Tusop. King of Tusop. <laughs> sent me memes. He Whatever. sent me memes. <laughs> uh, fucking straw man can be the king of the cornfield. <laughs> but yeah, he hooked us up with uh, with Tanya. He went did a did a um, what do they call it a flashlight tour or something like that up there and and was telling her about us. So he said reach out to her. She's very interested. So she'll be coming at the uh, i don't know if she'll be coming next in september when, it, when the recording with her is at the end of the month so mm -hmm. um of course peter will be back nice for another episode so um and we were supposed to record with star williams last night but she uh she got ill so we're going to reschedule her for september um so yeah we got uh, a lot of guests going on super excited and um I hope you guys out there, uh, Tusop listeners and fans, I hope you guys are excited too. And of course, you know, the, as of today, this is August 1st as we're recording this and the new Patreon videos have dropped. So not only do you get trivia number two nice. with Chico, with Chico noise, uh, leading the band of misfit toys there, you also get the first, um, set of dirty dad jokes. Oh God. Yeah, listen, uh, we didn't drink much because nobody laughed. <laughs> oh, no. That's rough. Um, Sean was there. He was kind of our grand marshal as far as uh, the judging of whether it was a laugh or not. So that worked out really well. You could hear him in the background. That's a laugh. Uh, Bobby's like, oh, fuck, I got a drink. <laughs> uh, oh, it was a good man. time. We're going to revamp that a little bit. You're going to get uh, the next couple months. You're going to get all three sets, but um, we're going to revamp it a little bit, do it a little bit different for the next one. And uh, hopefully it'll be even better. Of course, we want to bring back another trivia night. Um, I think uh, Peter said he'd love to jump in on a trivia night with us. So maybe we'll get him in on that. Um, and of course, J dubs always got a uh, new, new things she's throwing at me. She wants to do for the Patreon. So nice. we're working it. They're keeping it coming. So join that Patreon. Staying busy. To uh, Patreon.com slash Tusop. There you go. And of course, always the United States Paranormal dot com for cool. all of your merchandise needs. Oh, yeah. We just had uh, Chico snagged him. The, the hoax is out there. T-shirt. Yep. Absolutely. I think that has the Call Guys logo on the, does, on the on side. The sleeve, of yeah. Yep. yeah. And of course... Don't forget to check out PerfectlyPickGames.com. I didn't even realize that was the shirt you were wearing there. <laughs> That's right. Perfectly Pick Games. Go check it out. Um, they will set you up for your family game night. All personally picked. That's why it's called Perfectly Pick. Yeah, and you guys got a discount code, correct? Yes. Let's put in Golden Mojo at, at checkout and get 20% off. That ain't no joke. That's a good discount. That's a hell of a discount. It's a hell of a discount. All right, my dude. Are you ready to get into uh, the July episodes? Yes, sir. I've got it all ready to go. He's got it all mapped out, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. I listened to a lot of Tusop the last two days. Just re-upping. <laughs> all righty. We started things off with episode 135, The Candy Lady, presented by The Rocker Chick. Down in Texas, Clara Crane whacked her husband with drug lace candy and got hauled off to the loony bin. Allegedly got released from the nut bar only to start making candy that she lured children to their death with. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, for starters, let me apologize. <laughs> for I don't know why, but I thought that she said it was the cotton candy lady. Cotton candy lady. <laughs> so the original, if you if you all that's a little listen... bit more disturbing, honestly. A bitch hanging <laughs> know, out right? in your window holding a thing of cotton candy, cotton candy. Is, a, that's right. is, a, is a little bit more scary than just like a fucking <laughs> caramel candy sitting on your window step. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why, but so when I originally uh, released the episode, I actually enti- enti- titled it The Cotton Candy Lady. And then as I was listening back to it, I'm like, ah, so fucked. <laughs> like so I, yeah, I went like back and fixed villain. the <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I went back and fixed the episode title and the, the, the uh, show notes. But all of the social media stuff went out as the cotton candy lady. So uh, the cotton candy nobody lady. called me out on it, and I'm okay with that. But uh, I, I don't apologize. I make mistakes. It happens. Yeah. It was, it was an interesting story. Uh, the lady, uh, I guess her kid died, and she got she got a little batshit crazy and mm-hmm. poisoned her husband with candy. And then proceeded to go to a, like the nut house and just... S- they they let her go even though she was writing letters like she was chilling in the nut house with her daughter. Oh yeah, yeah. They're like they're like she fully well thinks her daughter is still alive and chilling with her, but we think she's good to go. We think she's <laughs> she'll fine. Be, she'll be fine. It'll be she all good. Scooted her out the fucking door and nobody ever fucking <laughs> saw her again. Well, didn't she? If I remember right, didn't she actually have like a. Uh... A little fabric doll that she made while she's yeah, in there. That just went... her little bullshit, like she stuffed straw and shit in it. And <laughs> they're like, this is my baby. And they're like, you're good to go, right? Yeah. Right, Clara? Fine. You're fine. <laughs> and they're like, they don't, like her sister didn't come pick her up or nothing. They just like open the door and they're like, they let out. I imagine they let out a few crazies that day. They're, they're probably like, we need more room. So yeah. y'all just go on out there. You'll be fine. Don't just, hurt nobody. Mm, okay, you're good. Yeah, yeah. they're <laughs> just like they're, she poisoned her husband with candy. I mean, she's she's essentially homeless now. She has nowhere to cook candy. It'll be fine. <laughs> it it was a fun story. Uh, you know, you you get a get a sense of how fucking crazy people are. You know, uh, and you know what the loss of a child. I mean, it, really, that's the whole whole deal is the loss of a child and. And she just couldn't handle it. And she blamed him for the child's death. And, and you know, this is the end result. And then you just show up at people's houses and put candy on the windowsill of the kids' you know, windows and and uh, see what you can get out of that. But, yeah. Hey, so you don't let fucking crazies go, <laughs> especially when they're still showing signs of the crazy. Exactly. I just don't. I just don't get it. But like I said, way back then was completely different. Hell, you could just put your wife in a nut house back in the day just because she was being uppity. So yeah, it's true. You know, standards there were just not the best. They're just like ah. Uh, uh, you want to fuck your secretary? Well, yeah. you're, you're married. If you put her in that house, you yeah, can just, bang the secretary. Just lo- just lobotomize her and <laughs> slap her in here, and it's all fine. <laughs> That's probably what happened is they need to make room for new mistresses for rich guys. So they just kick the real crazies out and here you go. Yeah, look, we got a vacancy. Oh, that's great. I walked by us the weirdest lady with a doll trying to give me some candy on the way in here. But yeah, don't eat that shit. Yeah, no, don't touch that. Yeah, that's, that's you'd bad. Be, you'd be all right. She's she's completely fine, but just, just don't just don't eat the candy. Right, right. No. <laughs> yeah, fun episode. Uh, Rocker Chick did a great job and uh, – of telling the story as always so but i said it was cool uh like i said i'm a texas person i hadn't heard of that one but i enjoyed looking into it uh our second episode of the month was mm-hmm. episode 136 and that was alien Deductions number two brought to yes. you by j-dub she started with betty and barney hill in 1961 but dove into multiple stories of encounters ranging from strange lights uaps abductions disappearances and even a sexual encounter that lady with his uh, his red haired uh, bushed alien, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, stemmed a lot of conversation after we were done. You know, it's sure like did, as uh, it does. You know, yeah. like what, like just like one. It was weird because I was like, the, there were some aliens there, and they were wearing overalls, and, and then they brought out the lady alien with her red bush, and I was just like, sure, <laughs> I'll have sex with her. <laughs> 
Well, I don't think the ca- the carpet matched the drape, so if I remember right, right? Yeah, no, it was just like, <laughs> yeah, it just it wasn't adding up. Right, right. But he was still like, yeah, I'll do it <laughs> for science or saving your planet. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's always fun to get J Dub to. Um, to dive into these alien stories because she's so fucking uncomfortable when she does them. Yeah. I, and she only does it because it makes for a good, a good podcast. I mean, um, you know, we all know how uncomfortable she is and, uh, yet we cheer her on when she, uh, when she gets into these. So that's why she does them for, for all the listeners, because that's what people love. But, uh, we did get a comment and I know we talked about this later and I'm not sure if it's aired yet or not, but we got a comment on the Podbean of um the one abduction uh the, uh one of the loggers right yeah 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 that they found him years later or something like that it's five days later he five they actually later, returned yeah. yep he actually returned and uh and you know uh went to but well, they said he he saw a, a spaceship flying away when he woke up five days later laying mm-hmm. on the ground and he made it to a gas station or something and called uh called his family and they came and got him or whatever that's some x-files but, type shit right there absolutely but um i, I can't re- I, I can't remember the name of the the listener that sent it out very very nice very nice little uh comment on the pod being about it so i know i talked about it in one of the episodes i just don't remember which one yeah aliens are trippy man it's like i said those first and foremost like it's like there, you deal with a lot of people talking about hauntings and stuff, but like people that talk about alien encounters, they're just like you're getting one extreme or like the other. Right. It kind of seems like you got the ones that are just like really fucking out there, and then you got the people that are just like, yeah, I saw an alien, or <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, do you? I I I know that you kind of live in in the in more of a town setting, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, lots of houses. I mean, I live, you, you know me, I live out here in, in, you know, a mile away from any city or little small town. So I have a lot of sky to look at. Do you, uh, do you ever go out and just stare up and see what you can see while you're out there? It was, it was, like I said, it was easier to do it when I was out in Indiana. Um, my parents' place is out kind of in the boonies. So at night it's really easy to see the sky out there. So nice. like every now and then you might see something like a random ass shooting star or, or nowadays it could, you could, you see stuff that's like, what's that? And it's like, it might be a satellite or it might be a drone. God knows right. what nowadays. Right. Uh, but I've never seen anything too wacky up in the sky. That's for sure. We we were out the other night and I was looking up and, and, and I looked and I got a flash of something and I don't know what it was. And I, I think I made a comment on one of the, one of the pods about it. I mean, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure it wasn't a lightning bug, but it was, you know, it was really kind of up there to be that and bright. So uh, I don't know what it was, but, um, you know, it's no matter, no matter what you're looking at, if you see something going across the sky and it's, uh, and you don't know what it is, that makes it a unidentified, which makes it a UFO. So there yep. you go. <laughs> yep, exactly. Anything, <laughs> anything just buzz in the sky that you don't know what the fuck it is you just be like that's a ufo or a uap because i mean right it's an unidentified aerial phenomenon i said oh it is what it is <laughs> uh i mean i believe that there's stuff out there i just i just don't think i just don't think they give a whole hell of a lot of shit about us not to say that they haven't been here but i just don't think they're super interested in what we got going on <laughs> and i think I like they i think it's uh i think interstellar travel is a hard cookie to crack no matter where you're from. So I really feel right. like if they're out there, they're really fucking far away and they're probably struggling with the same shit we are. They're like, they're like, Hey, we've been to our moon once, but that's about it. <laughs> Cause everything else is so far the fuck away. I saw an interesting, uh, reels today. Of course, uh, they become more and more popular as we go along at these people who are claiming they're time travelers. Have you seen some of these? Yeah. Um, the guy today that I watched, and you know, take it for what it is, whether you believe him or not, it's up to you. Um, he said that uh, that what we consider aliens are actually time travelers who are humans who have evolved, and they're coming back to uh, 
to try to right some wrongs. So, uh, you know, well, take it for what it is. They're a shit job but... at it if that's what they're trying to fucking do. <laughs> I like if... the theory of time travel, but I feel like if anybody ever cracked that shit, the government would be up their ass so quick. Oh, yeah. Because that is a surefire way to fuck everything up. The moment the human beings figure out how to travel through time, shit's going to get wonky. And that just depends on what country figures it out first. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of, uh, well, I mean, look at look at, uh, um, look at at the movies that we've had over the years. You know, even just, just back to, just look at Back to the Future with the whole sports almanac and what, what the idea of that was. Um, you remember Time Cop with Jean Claude Van Damme? Oh, fucking Time Cop. God, yeah, that's your time travel movie. We're gonna pull no, from. Time. I'm just saying. Once again, those those people went back in time to basically set themselves up uh, for money in the future and money and power in the future. You know, um, I didn't say it was a wonderful movie, <laughs> <laughs> but the idea that that if if we did have time travel i would think that that would be the number one motivation to go back in time oh man it's, it's just it like time travel always brings me back to like two movies and one is uh the remake of time machine which uh, that was when was that that was in 2002 okay. and uh what was it, it was guy pierce in it and it was it was a professor like back in like the time where the cars were just being invented uh -huh. And he he's like a really smart dude. His girlfriend, he proposes to her and they get mugged in a park and she doesn't want to give up the engagement ring and she gets shot and dies. So he spends all this time to figure out a time machine and lo and behold, he figures it the fuck out. And the first thing he does is go back that night, try to fix it. Well, guess what? He stops her from going in the park. Uh, she gets run down by a horse. Oh, bro. He goes back again. She gets hit by a fucking car. <laughs> uh, and then he's just like, what the fuck's happening? So he's like, I've got it. I'm going to go to the future and I'm going to ask them because clearly I figured it out. So somebody else will. I'll right. go to the future, ask them why I can't fix this. Goes to the future to where like they have holograms in a library and he asks the hologram, which I think was played by Chris Tucker. Oh, good. Oh, no, Lord. no, no. Who is, who is the fucker? Who is the fucker from, uh, uh, evolution? The, like you got, you got he, me. Oh, God. What was his name? Oh, man. I'm all over the place here. I know this dude. Evolution film. Uh, Orlando Jones. Oh, okay. He, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's he's like the he's like this AI hologram at this library, and the guy's like, hey, can you pull up uh, – he's, he's like, I can give you – I can tell you about any book, it, anything. And he's like, okay, give me books on time travel. And he starts pulling up fictional books. And he's like, no – realistic or is in fact scientific fact and the fucking ai rolls his eyes at him and starts walking away and it's like oh and he's like oh so it still hasn't figured out i'll go farther in the future and he goes farther and he goes too far because the whole world's panicking because they were trying to colonize the moon and they fucking shattered the moon <laughs> and so he he ended up in a post-apocalyptic time he's like okay well this fucking sucks this didn't work out uh Everybody's panicking. He manages to get in his time machine but gets knocked unconscious and goes way too far in the future. <laughs> and it's just this whole this whole big thing of just like time travel is fucked. And he realizes it at the end. Right. And he was just like – he just fucking uses his machine to blow up because like the whole subplot is is that when the moon got all fucked up, some people went below the earth uh -huh. uh, to stay safe and some people stayed up top. And the ones that went below earth became like flesh-eating Morlocks like mutants. Oh, and it's this whole big thing. It's a great movie, uh, <laughs> but it's 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 either it would end up like that one person figuring it out and just fucking up a ton of shit and right. and and just being like, no, nobody needs this, or it's going to be like Minority Report, to where the government's like, we got time travel figured out, so now we're going to arrest people for crimes they commit in the future. <laughs> hey, I don't know, man. I just I, I just, just hope gonna... we never cracked that one. I. Uh... Well, I mean, there are pictures and stuff all over the place that say that we did, you know, maybe, with people with cell hey, phones and shit like that. Maybe from... maybe these people figured it out, but not as well as they thought. Maybe they figured out one-way time travel, you know? And they got stuck. Yeah, so it was like, yeah, this fucker got back to fucking 1600s with a cell phone, but that was it, you know? 
Well, think about that for a minute. If you go back, if you go back, who the fuck are you going to call? Yeah, he was like, oh, no, he, gonna, yeah, he's like, I'm gonna take, gonna work. he was like, I'm going to take pictures. This is going to be great. And then his time machine doesn't work in reverse. And he's like, fuck, <laughs> I got all these pictures. What am I going to do with these? You can look at them until your phone dies and you can never charge it again. Uh, but yeah, if we figured out, just imagine like, let's say Britain figures out time travel first. And they're like, you know what? Let's go back there. Let's go back in time and drown that George Washington fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he crosses that river. We got this figured out. And we're like, yeah, oh, now shit. United States of America, my ass, Britain number two. <laughs> you, know, you ain't wrong. You ain't it's, wrong. It, it's just, it would be, like I said, it, I'm, I'm only wondering if there was like a space race at one time. Because, you know, our government was doing wacky shit back in the day. Right. So it makes you wonder if was there – like there, there was a point in time where they were studying with psychedelics. And there was the time where the government was looking into paranormal shit. Hell, Hitler had a whole fucking group of people that right. looked into the cult. So I wonder if there was ever a time our government was in a race with other governments trying to figure out if time travel was possible. And now there's just a huge uh, filing cabinet down in the <laughs> Pentagon of being like, yeah, we tried. We tried it all, but none of it worked out. So we just shelved it for now. Well, let me uh, let me ask you this. If uh, if they did figure it out and they went back and they changed shit, how would we know? Yeah, I mean, maybe they did. Maybe this yeah. was Britain number two at first, and they were like, "Nah, <laughs> nope, <laughs> we're no. fixing this shit." <laughs> Think about that one for a minute. I mean, there's no telling, or maybe they, you know, like I would just if that filing cabinet exists, I'd love to read through it. You can imagine how many times they're like, "It worked. We sent Terry somewhere. Terry never came back." <laughs> Ah, we found Terry later in a history book yeah. <laughs> on like, his fucking cell phone. <laughs> it was weird. We found a we found a bunch of caveman skeletons, and next to one of them was a nicer looking skeleton uh, that had uh, jeans on and uh, Nokia cell phone with him. <laughs> We're pretty sure that was Terry. Oh man. Oh man, we should have gotten Colton on for this time travel uh, piece here. <laughs> hey, hey, one day, one day, two stops gonna have to do a time travel one because there's just so much. There, like you said, there's so many pictures and so many stories of people being like, th "There was this time traveler, and there was this," right. and like, and and some people claim that like our technology advanced so much because of aliens, and there's out people out there that claim that it advanced so much because somebody figured out time travel and came back and was like, "I'm gonna make bank." Yeah, like there's theories out there that fucking Steve Jobs was a time traveler, and like the only reason he knew everything he did and revolutionized stuff because he was like, I, yeah. I, I brought all, I just brought a handful of shit back with me from year thirty thousand this, and it's just like <laughs> money. <laughs> we just have kept uh, kept creating off of the creation that I brought back. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, does. yeah, it, it's hard to wrap your mind around it, but uh, yeah, insane. Well, all right, what's next? third episode of the month was episode 137 you dove into the phenomenon known as third man syndrome also known as phantom stranger or for religious folk maybe even a guardian angel yeah absolutely that's it it's an interesting phenomenon for sure i'm sure you had a blast reading through people's uh occurrences with it and everything like I that i did um listen uh i don't uh I don't doubt this one at all. This is one of those oh, yeah, one of those things that I 100% believe in because I think that there's there's a lot of different branches off of it that you can take and and you know there's too many coincidences for this to not be true, honestly. Yeah. And uh, and it's just amazing uh, these stories. I love the one. I love the one of the. the I think it was. Uh, the husband who was trapped in that car and the kid come up and said, just stay in your car. I've called the police and, and you know, there's electrical lines down. So just stay in your yeah. car and boom here. Uh, the cops show up by accident because they wanted to check the power. They heard there were the power lines were down and uh, you know, they find this guy and they're like, yeah, if you'd have gotten out of the car, you'd have died because you'd have stepped right on one of these power lines and it would have killed you. Oh yeah. And, and it's like, there, nobody could have walked up to your car and knocked on the window. I mean, that would have been my first giveaway. It's like, if I can't get out of my car, how are you walking up to my car? Exactly. You, you know, you're like, uh, that doesn't make any sense. But um, I I believe in that whole, that whole scenario. I think that uh, there's always – and it goes back to 
and you'll hear about it when we talk with um, uh, Oracle Pink. Uh, she talks about how all of us have a spirit guide that come, that is with us at all times. I mean, that none of us, there's nobody who doesn't have one. There's always, always one with every one of us. And, and she talks about that a little bit. So, and it kind of reinforced the third, third man syndrome a little bit for me, a little bit more. I mean, I, like I said, I, I find these stories to be compelling and, and, uh, and really truly believable. So, yeah, I, I mean, I completely believe too. Uh, and like I said, I feel like there's some people's that's like clearly are more uh, interactive uh, right. and, and like and help people out of binds. Uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people had those moments where like they're, they they turn their head and like they swear they see somebody standing like right there. Right. And then you look and there's nobody there and you're just like, I could have swore. Or uh, there's people that have occurrences where like they, they're like, I just – had a conversation with this person like no yeah. what are you talking about that person's at home and you're just like what the fuck what is that right but uh i i like i'm with you i completely believe in it uh i think there's it's something out there uh it's been in media forever i mean how many songs and like legends are there of people uh there's there's songs like private malone and stuff like that of like people like be like oh i saw a soldier pull you out of that car but there was no soldier and, and right. stuff like that it's all. It's always been in the zeitgeist of humanity. So I just feel like there's too much evidence out there to, to even consider it not being real. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, and we will get into when we talk about the uh, back to paranormal episode here in a little bit. But uh, talking about the, um, the art of attraction, mm -hmm. and you know how I'll, I think that's part of that third man syndrome the, with you know and how that works out, but. I don't know. Take it for what it is. Absolutely. Good. Good. It was a fun story. And thank you for the rocker chick because she saved my ass with that one. Because Oh, yeah. That's the one that she helped you out with. Yeah. <laughs> well, happens. she picked a good one. She picked a good she one. She did. She did. That gets us to, speaking of the rocker chick, that takes us to our fourth episode of the month, which was episode 138, the North Brother Island, told by the rocker chick. This island was home to the Riverside Hospital, a makeshift quarantine zone, and eventually Typhoid Mary's uh, home. The island right. was also known by the tragic ferry fire that claimed the lives of 1,021 people. The land uh, that is now restricted is said to be haunted on both land and sea with whispers and screams, hospital patients, and even ghost ferry. Yeah. Well, what were they? Uh, let's start off with the ferry. I mean, you know, uh, uh, over 1,000 people died in that because ferry accident. Because of fucking negligence. Yeah. <laughs> Holy exactly. shit. It was like, well, it was just was like, he ignored the kid. The kid was like, hey, fire. And the captain was like, hey, yeah, fuck off, kid. Yeah. And then on top of that, all the safety gear was fucked. And the fucking vests were like – the guy was like, hey, those vests are kind of looking a little shitty. Hey, shove some metal bars in there to make them look like they're sitting upright and they're good. <laughs> and then people are hopping in the water and sinking like fucking lead balloons. Yeah. Yep. It just was – it was a trash fire of well, – well, it was a fire nonetheless. Yep. It just, uh, just tons of people just instant, And they weren't even far off from right. – they were so close to the island, so it's yeah. just it's just gnarly. Yeah, it makes you wonder about uh, how much that putting that lead in those uh, life preservers actually caused more death. Than, oh, absolutely! Especially yeah. when they're talking about there was mostly women and kids on there. Like, yeah. imagine how many kids just sunk because of that. Yeah, it's horrendous. And, I, yeah. and then, of course, that guy fucking survived, but you know, the law came at him. So, absolutely. At least there's absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, and of course, you know, we got into deep conversations about typhoid Mary and the, kind of the whole, um, why she did what she did. Type she just of thing. sound like a shit, like a stubborn shithead. I like, yeah. I get, I'll, I'll allow the, no, I don't want a doctor to cut me open way back then. I get that because like oh, nowadays yeah. that's a simple procedure back then you could absolutely have died. Um, oh yeah. But the whole be like, hey, we'll let you go. Just don't work in food. Yeah. And this bitch was like, you ain't going to tell me what to do. And immediately, immediately went to back working. In, and it was like she went to work at what, a maternity place or something like that is what, oh, God. Is I know, what I she said. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't but remember. But some place where it was like it's, not even like it's not even like she went to a cafeteria or a restaurant. She went to a place where it was like 
maternity. Like I, I'm fairly certain that's what she said. So it's just like that's one of the worst places you could go. And and then they locked her up in the hospital for the rest of forever. And I was like, at that point, I was like, that's fine. You deserve that shit. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I agree with you 100. percent You don't want to be cut open. Um, that's fine. Just don't work in food. Yeah. yeah. Simple. Simple easy. and easy. Easy yeah. solution. No. No, I, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Y'all just making this shit up. It's like there's a reason why people keep dying when you yeah. start cooking for them, Mary. <laughs> Simmer the fuck down. Maybe she's the candy lady. Or wash your fucking hands. I mean, uh. holy shit. <laughs> well, and then that gets us into how did they get the stool sample from her that the, the proved oh, that. Oh, probably with her kicking and fucking screaming. They probably <laughs> locked – honestly, back then they probably locked her in a room with nothing to to use the restroom in. And they're like, eventually we're going to get something, Mary. <laughs> That's it's probably fair. how they did it, honestly. It's, it's sad and scary. But, you know, Typhoid Mary is probably one of the most, uh, most known um, – names i don't know that people know the story behind her but you know everybody's got that typhoid mary uh, uh meme or pun or whatever they put out there oh yeah well that's what they use that term now when there's like a patient zero or somebody spreading something like oh that it's a, this person's a modern day typhoid mary it's because right. it just means it's somebody that knows they're sick and willingly jeopardizing other fucking people right which right. is what she was doing and like I said, Absolutely. it's just people back then. There were so many deaths in hospitals back then, especially with uh, people giving birth, because fucking people did not think to wash their hands back in the day. Right. So there was doctors like, all right, well, I just cut open this guy that died of gangrene. Well, let me go reach in some lady's junk to pull out a baby. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the mom's dead from sepsis. And like, we don't know what happened. They were like, oh, yeah. gee, fucking. The, I literally heard about that today. The the original doctor that worked at a place where they they, they, they did a bunch of births i think it might have been in new york and he was like listen listen the reason we keep having these moms die is because ain't nobody washing their hands and they're sticking their hands up in their junk. just rinse your hands and it was in lime and okay. i think lime and lye or something like that he was like it and he's like i've been doing it and ain't none of my ladies died it's working great for me and all these other doctors were like whatever yeah, and, and and then they just kept doing it, and they all were like, "He's a quack, he's a quack." And after that dude died, people looked back at it, and they're like, "Hey, well, look at this." The whole time he was a doctor, after he put out this paper, he didn't have a single death in in uh, childbirth. Maybe he was mm, on to something, maybe. but of course, you know, the dude's fucking dead, which right. was grave a quack because they're like this guy washes his hands before he touches people's privates. <laughs> what a fucking weirdo! That's just wrong. Yeah. Wrong. He's like, that's, that's stupid. Hey, hand me my knife so I can cut this patient open and bleed the flu out of him. <laughs> Fucking Lord. The fact that we made it this far is just outstanding. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so North Brother Island is actually a very, very small island. What was it, about 400 square feet? Or... Yeah, it's it's small enough to where they can keep people the fuck off of it. Yeah. Um, and if you if you actually pull the map up, it's very, very interesting because I went and looked at it afterwards and – and, you know, you have this little baby island, the North Brother Island, and then they actually is a South Brother Island, a little bit lower in the, in huh. the I don't know, the river or whatever the hell it is that that comes up there. But then you have this huge Rikers Island, which is uh Oh, yeah. Well, you got to have a, the... a bigger fucking island for fucking criminals. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's pretty amazing. Go check it out. Uh, just just Google it and uh, go to the maps and go check it out. I mean, they used to use the fuck out of islands for everything. They're like, hey, we got a leprosy outbreak. Throw all those fucking leopards on the island. We got criminals. Fucking throw them on island. That's how we got fucking Australia. <laughs> Australia was just a place where Britain dumped their fucking criminals back in the day. And now it's what it is. Right. And right. like, and they're like, oh, yeah, dump the criminals there. That place is full of fucking poisonous everything and everything's trying to kill you there. And they didn't expect them to fucking colonize it and turn it into it. They're like, fuck. We, we worked this out. What do you think about us now? How yeah. do you like us now? How are they alive still? I'm like, well, yeah. we just don't touch basically anything out here. Yeah. This, you stand in this one little square. We're good. Yeah. So uh, it's fucking I send them all to bonkers. Snake Island. Oh, fucking Snake Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that place is nuts.
crazy place that Snake Island. Uh, our fifth and final episode of the month was the interview with Back to Paranormal Podcast. Brian and Marjorie discussed psychic manifestation, auras, and personal experiences with reading, readings and hauntings. They were super interesting oh, yeah. uh, and seemed like lovely people. Um, they both seemed so very nice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, also, just it's just really interesting just to hear them talking about their experiences, like I said, with psychic readers, uh, their personal experiences with hauntings, um, him briefly touching on the fact that uh, he used to be able to see auras prominently when he was younger. Right. Uh, and then you, you all went into a conversation about psychic manif manifestation where you was right. like, I thought about somebody – uh, and then there they were, or I, I just, uh, I wanted this and, and then eventually here it was. And it's just like, right. it was a very interesting episode. He, um, yeah. And he touched on them. We talked about, you know, the law of attraction, which is, you know, you, if you want something and you, and you kind of, you basically will it, you know, yeah. you will it to yourself. But you, you, I mean, there's a hard work that goes in, involved in some of that too, but um, you know, you just don't sit on your couch and go, God, I want a pizza. I want a pizza. And then one just shows up. And that no, but somebody happen. might show up and be like, hey, man, you want to order pizza? And you'd be like, fucking so, right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I did it. Ah, you... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it's, it's really interesting. It was really interesting to sit down with them and, and hear their stories. And of course, I've listened to a majority of their, uh, of their podcasts. Um, quite a few of them. I haven't listened to all of them, but. Uh, episode 13, uh, they recorded the night after that they recorded with us. Okay. And, uh, we got a nice little shout out to the beginning of their episode. So I thought that was really, really cool of them. And, uh, they actually for episode 14 went back and watched J dubs, a haunting episode. Oh, nice. And then they, they, um, they did a whole episode on the actual show, a haunting so like the first 15 minutes, they talked about Jen's episode and, and the kind of the different stuff with that. And then they moved on to a couple other episodes. So I'll have to check that out. But once again, they shouted out the United States paranormal, which I thought was fucking awesome. So yeah, that's really nice. But yeah, hopefully we get to work with them again. I think one of the biggest takeaways, and this is more just kind of a really cool thing was, is that while he was in L.A., he was uh, animating Tiny Toons and Animaniacs. Yeah, stuff I grew up watching. Was... Yeah. <laughs> did, it, did it take you by – he was yeah, very he nonchalant. Yeah, started saying that, and I was like, oh, shit, I watch those shows. <laughs> he was very nonchalant about it. He's like, yeah, I worked on this. Worked with Steven Spielberg. Worked with Hanna-Barbera. Well, I'm yeah, because like, Steven Spielberg whipped out those cartoons when – back in the day like he when, he he whipped out animaniacs and tiny tunes he was a part of it he even came in and voiced himself in both of them really yeah see i did not know that i mm -hmm. just know that i watched it and uh it was always fun i love tiny tunes man that was always a good one yep but yeah super nice people um ah man so so lucky to be able to to snag them for uh for a show and and um just really enjoyed our time with them yeah, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that episode. That was I listened to it yesterday, and like I said, they were both they were both really interesting folks. But the, at the most of all, they seemed really pleasant, like really nice oh, people. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, if you get a, if you guys missed it, go back and check it out. It was a good one, and go check out their uh, podcast, uh, Back to Paranormal. You can find I've been listening to it on Spotify. I'm sure it's on Apple, but I have not dug that deep. So yeah, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's probably out there on. Yep. On both. Uh, yeah, just go check them out. Uh, listen to their content. Give them a nice review if you can. Tell them Tusop sent you. Absolutely tell them Tusop sent you. But, but yeah. yeah, that was that was it for the month of uh, for the month of July. That was all yeah. five episodes. We were very busy. Yeah, no, we got, well, got quite a few in there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we got, like I said, we got more coming. We got some really good stuff coming up in August, so... Uh, super excited to see where it all goes. Make sure that everybody out there checks out the Patreon. Uh, Jeremy's going to have to plug it because I always forget what it's what it's the, the link to it is. <laughs> it's patreon.com slash Tusop. Where we just uploaded some new videos and stuff, including trivia part two. So mm -hmm. those videos are up. If you want to watch uh if you want to watch the regular show or the other side, but see us talking and our setups and everything, they can do so on the Patreon. Absolutely. Um, you also, if you sign up to the Patreon, you get a 
when you first sign up, you get a free poster autographed by the main crew. So keep that in mind. Also, check out the United States of Paranormal.com if you want to get your merch. We have all sorts of great designs, everything from Haskins the Scarecrow, Cast Purr. That's Cast <laughs> Purr. Um, the Hoax is out there shirt that like Chico just picked up. This is our Call Guys collaboration shirt. Right. All sorts of cool stuff. And if there's something that there's a design you want, but it's not on the kind of clothes that you like, let us know at Absolutely. United States of Paranormal at gmail.com and we can hook you up. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, J Dub actually, um, um, about a month or so ago, text me is like, I need an other, the other side sweatshirt. You guys don't have an other side sweatshirt. So uh, I put it together for her and boom, she got it. Uh, she got it in one of the really kind of cool purple colors, and she said that that blue on that purple just pops like crazy. Yeah. So uh, I didn't get a chance to see it yet, but um, looking forward to seeing it. And but yeah, we will definitely do that, either one of us. So um, just let us know. Let us know. But yeah, definitely go check it out. Um, also, while you're at it, there is all the other Golden Mojo Entertainment uh, shows. Uh, we've got the call guys, which is always phenomenal. We've got, um, golden eighties, which with Frankie Vegas, fantastic show. Love me some Frankie. We got the Indiana cheese fans, which is starting back up soon. Right. Or is already going? Uh, no, we'll start that in late August because of vacations and everything is going on. Uh, Phil is still in the midst of getting his, getting his new house in order. So, uh, I think late August we will start. With Indiana Chiefs fans, but um, we have started the Seasons in Hell Sports Network, nice. which uh, will be Indiana Chiefs fans and the Gridiron Kings with a Z, baby, um, whose first episode should have come out yesterday. Nice. So uh, you check out Coach and the Duke as they talk everything NFL. Uh, I think the first episode is all about the Hall of Fame game and the uh, inductees for this year. So gotcha. Uh, you and of course we have a new T-shirt up for the Gridiron Kings on Golden Mojo Ent dot com. It uh, turned out really well. Um, really happy happy with it. So. We're going to continue to kind of build some merch for them and continue to build the sports network with two different shows. And hopefully we can add some more down the road. Um, yeah. Hopefully. So, um, yeah. Uh, so that's the Indiana Chiefs fans, or as we like to call it now, Seasons in Hell. Seasons in Hell. Nice. Ah, yeah, it is a sports network now. We're working on We're That's what we're working towards. Uh, what else we got? Golden, we got Golden Image Podcast, yeah. which is which, uh, bi-weekly. Yeah, when we get well, time to record the damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> We're a little behind, peeps. So, uh, yeah, I, hopefully we'll have one out uh, next week, uh, next Tuesday. Well, you're going to have to do one. Uh, you and Chico are going to have to do one talking about the places you hit up while you are in Texas during oh, uh, August. Oh, so. yeah. You know it. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be down in New Orleans for uh, a day or two. So we'll have things to talk about there. And, uh, yeah, but it's, it's been such, it's been so crazy. And honestly, I was, uh, I wanted to do it last Sunday to record. And I was going to send a text out to the boys going, Hey, can you guys record tonight? And the next thing I knew it was nine thirty at night and I'd never sent a text. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Nice. It's like, Oh dear Lord. So, yeah, I did talk to the boys uh, uh, of this week, and I'm like, hey. And they're like, yeah, we're good. So hopefully we'll have one ready to go for next week. There you go. I can't fucking run nice. against my mic here. <laughs> yeah, all good. Uh, Jay then, be here should be all giggly yeah. and shit. <laughs> uh, Murder Nerds is being worked on. It's being worked on. Yeah. Uh, there's no one else to blame in this world but me. Nobody's blaming me. Everybody knows how busy you are. You're going to have to yeah. get down, my dude. Go on. <laughs> um, I got about half of my research uh, uh, completed. Um, the, the, the interesting thing is I don't think that, you know, there's so many true crime podcasts out there. I mean, there's tons of them. Yeah. And I don't think people understand how much research goes into – uh, making these episodes, uh, especially ones that are doing it weekly. Oh yeah. And you know, I want to make this right. I want to do it, do it good. And I 
want to do it good for the families of these people who are still missing. So, yeah. Yeah. Take I'm your time. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody pressuring you. Everybody, anybody that listens to this network knows that you're hella busy. So, <laughs> but and I it's, care it's about getting into wedding se- It's getting into wedding season. So, yeah. True. I, uh, I'm simpling down a little bit. I'm not doing as many weddings. I got two. I've got two to do yet. I've I already done one this season. Uh, I got two more to do, and I lost one in the shuffle. Uh, let me tell you, in a week's time, I lost two of them. What do you mean? To, you uh, the cousin who's going to do it for free. Oh yeah. Well, you know when uh, when their cousin fucks it up. Hopefully next time they get married, they'll be like, ah, well, maybe we'll get a, well, we'll get somebody that knows what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, you know, whatever works. I don't, I don't care. It takes it off my plate. I don't have to worry about it. I did pick up another one for one of those dates that uh, I got uh, dissed on. So mm. um, I'm okay with that. Uh, I'd rather n- not being disrespectful to the people who, who dropped me, but um, I prefer to actually do – the other one more because she's more family than somebody that I don't know. Yeah, I got you. So Logan's got to go full right after I get back from Power Morphicon. It is full uh, planning season. Yeah, for for the wedding stuff. Uh, Kayla made sure to let me know. She was like, "That's where we got to focus," and I was like, "That's fair." As soon as I got all this other shit off my plate, absolutely, we'll, I'll, I'll be good. Well, you know, I've been around a lot of weddings, so uh, if you need any advice or have any questions, you can always shout. Oh, I'll yeah. see what I can do. I've, I've, I've definitely, I've definitely got people to reach out to for, for certain. And then on top of that, my mom was just the other day was like, "Look, I seen all these things on sale. I bought them. You could use them at your wedding." <laughs> and she was like, "Do you want them at your house?" And I was like, "No, leave them at your big ass house. I ain't got room for this shit here." <laughs> Where uh, have you guys picked a venue yet? Yeah, my parents' house. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. Yeah, so why not you, leave the shit there? Yeah, when you <laughs> hey, when you when you get there, you'll understand because it's like you, you did the wedding at the other house. Yeah, there, there yeah. was that backyard with that with the the sidewalk that worked perfectly for walking oh, yeah. down it. They basically have the same setup at this house and then at the end of that sidewalk is a fucking massive bar. Oh, you yeah. know? I mean, we're going to have a lot of people there, but not a crazy amount of people. It'll, it'll all work out just fine. Perfect. And you know, it's right there. You, you, it's nothing like sleeping at the place and then just waking up and doing it and it being a place you're comfortable with and you don't have Absolutely. to rush to get out. Right. Uh but yeah, it was just like, I just was like, I think this is where we should do it. And Kayla agreed. And then I messaged my mom. I was like, Hey, and she was like, absolutely. Sure. Why not? Cool. Awesome. So. And, uh, and, uh, of course, um, uh, the DJ, whoever you get for your DJ, I have a pretty good idea what you're, what you're going to do there, but, um, yeah, we we'll probably just put Brandon on it, <laughs> honestly, is going to play a little Rihanna. Oh, like a sure. Why not? Why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah, but it's probably going to be Matt's equipment and Brandon working it. You know what I mean, so there you go. There you go. That's get it where you can get it. Yeah. That's right. That's absolutely. Uh, what else? We um, we did we miss one? Um, we did uh, call guys, Golden Image. Well, no, uh, Court of Books and Booze is, 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 is defunct. Yep. Uh, we did, yeah, no, I think we hit them all. Yeah, we got them all. Yeah. Golden 80s. Golden 80s. Go check out Golden 80s. Give Frankie some love, man. He, love uh, he's, me some Frankie. He's working pretty hard at this, and uh, he we got stood up by one of our guests uh, last oh, no. week, too. Yeah, that was kind of kind of sucked, but we pivoted, and we did just fine. That's what you got to do. that's what we do. Absolutely. All right, my dude. Are you good? Yep, I think that's it. And All right. Next time we're doing this, it's going to be in person. So, absolutely. Super and if you guys want to see that, Patreon, I assume. Patreon, Patreon dot com slash two stop. When it comes uh, down. Yeah, uh, full video. So uh, you can go check out all the uh, all the episodes with full video, so you can see facial reactions and. Um, Jen pointing at a light, uh, a motion light. I oh. off the side. <laughs> Shit. Oh, it's just good stuff. It's just good stuff. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we all like to always remind you guys, don't be worried or afraid of what happens when you die, because it's just going to be me and Golden Jay waiting for you here on the other side. Keep it spooky. 
later. Ghost noises. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the United States of Paranormal podcast. Check us out at unitedstatesofparanormal.com where you can find our Spotlight of the Month, Fan of the Month, and all of our amazing merchandise. Or you can find us on social media at Facebook at the United States of Paranormal, Instagram at the United States of Paranormal, and YouTube at the United States of Paranormal 1795. And don't forget, we are now on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash twosop. Please check out the other podcasts in the Golden Mojo Entertainment Network of Podcasts. The Call Guys, Golden Image Podcast, Indiana Chiefs Fans, Golden 80s, The Gridiron Kings, Murder Nerds, and A Court of Books and Booze, all of which can be found at goldenmojoent.com or wherever you stream your favorite podcasts. And if you have a location or a story that you would like for us to check into, please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. Please like, rate, and subscribe wherever you listen. Thank you for all of your support. Bye.